Hey everyone, uh, Dan McKenzie here with the McKenzie Law Firm. We are an estate planning, estate administration, and small business counsel law firm in the Denver, Colorado area. Wanted to make a video about what we most often encounter as a problem when we're doing probates. So it's kind of interesting, you know, a lot of people, they're doing estate planning, they've never really been through a probate process, which is why I'm kind of skeptical, frankly, of like the online services or templates or whatever else. I mean, you can go out there and very easily execute a will. Now, I'm actually like the new uh, artificial intelligence intelligent stuff. As I make in this video, chat GPT is the kind of all the rage of what people are talking about. You can go on a chat GPT and have a draft your will actually. And so I might make a video about that uh, pretty soon. But anyway, you can draft a will, you can handwrite a will, you can type one up, you can grab one off of LegalZoom or one of the other services that provides that. But if you've never really been through a probate process, you frankly don't know where the landmines are and where the problems arise. And if I ask you what you think, like which kinds of estates do you think have the most problems, you would probably think it's the really big ones. <laughs> the ones that have a lot of different assets and a lot of different family members and maybe stepkids and all that kind of, you know, kids that don't like each other. I mean, all that can, of course, yes, it can be the source of problems for sure. And you wanna be a little bit thoughtful about that if you have those dynamics. But the one common thread that we see in literally every problematic probate we've done up until the time that I'm making this video is real estate. <laughs> and you might think, well, that's kind of crazy. Real estate's so common. I mean, most people who pass away own real estate. You know, you have your house at least, if not some other stuff too. So it's not like it's an exotic asset that people aren't familiar about dealing with. You know, what's the problem? You sell it, you, know, dis you distribute the funds, and that probably, you know, does happen most of the time. But the most common situation where we really see problems is actually where someone is living in real estate that belong to the person who passed away. And the person who's living there really doesn't have any documented right to stay there. They're not on the deed, there's no rental agreement. So the most frequent situation is where there's an adult kid who maybe was living with the parents, taking care of them near the end of life and all that kind of stuff. And they might have lived there their entire lives. We've run into that actually quite often or at least for a number of years. And in their minds, at least, that's their house. That's where they've been living. And in a lot of circumstances, maybe they feel kind of like a debt of gratitude is owed to them, not incorrectly, for doing that kind of care, that end of life care. But it can be any situation, frankly, I mean, college age students living at home or just a, a sibling living in a, a property that could be a rental property and the family member is just like, you know, just live there and you know, cover the expenses, but you know, you don't only rent or anything like that. So we just see all kinds of informal arrangements where people have real estate and they're letting people live there. And it's a real problem because in the estate process, you know, when a fiduciary comes in, that's the personal representative, sometimes called the executor or the trustee of the trust. That person's duty is to everybody who's a beneficiary of the estate. And so if you've got other people who are not living there, like they're also supposed to benefit from the sale of that house. And that fiduciary cannot just sit there and say, oh, you know, I know you, uh, you've you been living here for years and mom and dad wanted it that way and all that kind of stuff. If that's not written down, they are not allowed to just let that person keep living there. And so it can create a lot of issues. And obviously, unlike other assets like cash, savings, stocks, bonds, like all those kinds of financial instruments, 401ks, whatever else that people are very commonly invested in, real estate is always unique. And it's not as liquid as all that other stuff. Even if, you know, we've had a very hot real estate market in the Denver area, you know, even throughout some difficult economies actually for years, decades actually, that it's been pretty easy to sell a house here for a very long time. But even in that situation, like if you suddenly have a house to sell, it's gonna take you a few months at least. And so in the meantime, there's all kinds of stuff that different people might handle differently. You know, as far as like, how much maintenance are we gonna do on this house before we sell it? How much is worth investing? in it should we fix you know should we hold it actually should we just not even sell it at all should we keep it as a rental and again in the meantime while we're figuring this out who's covering the expenses the insurance the taxes the maintenance the upkeep all those kinds of things and so all these questions can be very difficult to handle in an estate administration process and so if you've got real estate i mean like i said most people have real estate who have passed away but if you've got someone living in a house you really got to be really thoughtful about that if you've got an especially unique type of property again around here in denver i mean of course you got you know houses up in the foothills and vacation properties and all kinds of stuff that is even more unique than maybe the kind of the, the cookie cutter suburban stuff around my office here but if there's anything about a family member who would want some particular property even either because they're living there or they vacation there just sentimental value 
is just a lot harder to deal with, frankly, than the other assets that I mentioned. No one cares which share of stock they get, which dollar they get out of the bank account, which life insurance you know, dollars they're getting. None of that really matters. But when it comes to real estate, it's just a lot harder. And some people wouldn't expect that. But this can come up with any, frankly, any asset that doesn't really have a huge market for it and come up with like collectible personal property. You know, sometimes people have collectible cars or they have substantial gun collections or something like that where family members have, you know, again, sentimental attachment to it. It's not really easy to replace that collectible car. We can't cut it up into three pieces and give it out to the siblings. Like one person's getting it and maybe two people aren't, right? Closely held businesses, that can be another challenging issue if there's like a family business. A lot of times so when there's family businesses, like one kid has been working in the business and the other kids not so much. There's varying levels of connection between the siblings to the business and that can create challenges because similar to the house that family members working there is like, this is my job, this is my career. Like I've put so much into this business, I deserve more. If that's not documented, they don't, they're not legally entitled to more. That has to be documented somehow. So you just wanna make sure you've thought through that stuff. And again, if you really haven't been through an estate administration before, planning around this stuff and thinking of these things, it's probably not gonna happen. So it's just it's just better for you to think, maybe talk to people who uh, do this on a regular basis. If that was us, we would be honored. Again, with the McKenzie Law Firm, we're in the Denver, Colorado area. Our phone number, 303-578-2745. Our website is themckenziefirm.com. And I appreciate you watching this video. I hope it was helpful. And uh, any thoughts, share them in the comments. Thanks.